Hello and welcome to the third session of Drax EV Fleet Academy. My name is Katie Burrows. I'm the Solutions Delivery Lead in the EV team here at Drax. At Drax, we bring our expertise in energy and experience in electric vehicles to help businesses prepare a successful and enduring electric vehicle future. We have created the EV Fleet Academy to celebrate the launch of My Electric Vehicles, a digital platform that provides fleet managers with all the relevant real-time data they need to manage their electric vehicles, charge points and energy data all in one place. Focusing only on the information that is actually relevant to a fleet manager, My Electric Vehicles details how the fleet's electric vehicles are performing, flags any issues and offers solutions to how to resolve them. Through an interactive map, fleet managers can see their full fleet of electric vehicles and charge station portfolio, including those that are in use or faulty. My Electric Vehicles can also display the expected range of a vehicle in the fleet based on its current charge and identify which charging stations are within range. This allows fleet managers to communicate with their drivers when in transit to ensure vehicles have access to charges if needed. This session forms part of a series that we've created to help you as fleet managers, operators, directors or anyone who has a role in their company's fleet electrification. The past 18 months has had a huge impact on the transport and energy sectors, presenting us with both challenges and opportunities. So we're approaching these sessions with a broader context in mind and how you can plan for it as someone who has a hand in managing a fleet. We've also got plenty of resources on our website to help. And as I'm sure you know, we've been running a private LinkedIn group for course participants alongside these sessions. So hopefully you've been commenting and asking questions already. Just by joining our LinkedIn group, you could be in with a chance of winning a staycation at the quiet site, an award winning luxury carbon neutral holiday site. Head over there after you've watched this session and continue the conversation. The group will stay open for two weeks after the course is finished, so you'll still be able to join us in the future. We hope you've been enjoying the course so far. We've covered a lot of ground in the previous sessions, including planning and installation of charging infrastructure and rolling out an electric vehicles proposition for your drivers. We're now on to our third topic, data. It seems like everyone agrees how important data is in helping with fleet management. But in this session, we hope to give you some practical advice on how to get the data working for you, not against you. Here's what we'll be covering in today's session. Introduction, pandemic and acceleration of digitization and remote fleet management. Where to begin, your telematics data. Energy management, the metrics that matter. Eco driving, diagnostics and maintenance. Fleet management, combining driver and energy data, your daily dashboard your internal stakeholders, what data do they want to see? Introduction, the pandemic, acceleration of digitization and remote fleet management. The pandemic has accelerated a shift in digitization across the board, not least with fleets. As fleet managers, you have probably found it increasingly beneficial to monitor and organize your team remotely if you weren't already doing this. This was a change that was already happening, but the pandemic has really accelerated this trend. The data reveals there's still a lot of room for improvement when it comes to fleet electrification, digitization and cost optimization. Businesses have had to adapt in response to pandemic and resilience was key. The levels of uncertainty have meant that fleet managers have faced unprecedented planning challenges. For forward planning, you'll know that the greater the uncertainty, the harder it is, especially if you're aligning plans to leasing cycles. A pandemic has added another layer of complexity to say the least. Industry research suggests electrification, COVID-19 and cost reduction are the three challenges which have jumped straight to the top of the fleet agenda recently. Added to these, there are concerns around charging infrastructure, vehicle pricing and lead times, all sticking points ahead of the government's ban on traditional internal combustion engine in 2030. Data is the key to navigating these challenges as efficiently as possible. Through telematics, diagnostics and software, fleet operators have access to more data than ever before. Not only can this be useful in understanding current behaviour, performance and costs, it can also be used to identify trends, opportunities, mitigate risk and build resilience in their future fleet plans. Historical data is one certainty a fleet manager can rely on when planning. Chances are, if you're using fleet managing software, you're already drowning in data. There's so much that can be measured, it can be hard to see the wood from the trees, especially if you have different metrics sitting in different platforms. Adding in electrification will also require you to manage charge station and energy consumption data alongside fleet data. So that's yet another layer of complexity. 
Our goal with the Drax EV Fleet Academy is to help fleet managers consolidate their data into a holistic overview and make that data that's generated more meaningful to enable it to be put to use. Data should be turned into information, information which can create insights into patterns and behaviour to give you, as fleet managers, understanding of what is really happening and how you can influence meaningful change. Where to begin? So where should you even begin when it comes to harnessing data? The first step is looking at all the important sources of data available to you that informs the holistic view. As fleet managers, you'll be familiar with driver and vehicle data. Where this meets electrification in the form of electric vehicles, charge point data and energy consumption also come into view. Driver data, telematics, route planning. This is the data fleet managers will use to understand and improve driver behaviour. Some drivers will need help transitioning into a driving style that's suitable for EV. Fleet managers need to be able to monitor data related to drivers' behaviour and have it reported on the dashboard by the fleet management software. Telematics are required for this purpose as they're a mechanism which enable data collection from vehicles. Vehicle type, condition and maintenance. Collecting live vehicle data helps fleet managers monitor the condition to stay ahead of any vehicle downtime or plan for any maintenance which needs to be scheduled. Local grid conditions. Can the local power grid accommodate your fleet's charging needs? If the requirements can't be met, fleet managers need to look outside the organisation for help in securing a partnership with an energy provider. Charge point or charge station data. Your energy provider should also enable you to collect and track data related to operating charge points. You should have a strong understanding of the costs involved in installing the charge stations, as well as the daily energy consumption of your fleet. Monitoring costs. All the items above tie down to costs. Due to so many moving elements, fleet managers need to have a dashboard which provides a real-time update on the costs involved in running the fleet. You should aim to have a good understanding of the whole business cycle and quick access to data from energy suppliers, maintenance and other suppliers. How to leverage your telematics data to support your switch to EVs. Firstly, I'd like to say that EV fleets can function without telematics, but we would strongly advise you that your fleet does use it. Without the ability to monitor and optimise through data, you'll be making decisions blind and it makes the process more cumbersome. So we're going to assume for this purpose of the section that your fleet already uses telematics. Here are just some of the ways that you can use this data to support the transition to electric vehicles. A fleet will be a significant chunk of a business's carbon footprint, so any improvements in emissions, cost effectiveness and efficiency are positive stories for the company to tell in relation to their sustainability goals. We'll revisit this idea in more detail in our final session. Eco-driving is a term that's been coined to describe the most fuel efficient driving techniques. With this goal in mind, telematics data can be used to identify your best eco-drivers and spot areas for improvement. Getting the most out of an electric vehicle is really important as you don't have the luxury of a higher range in between refuelling. Anecdotal evidence has shown improvements of over 30% when drivers consciously implemented some basic eco-driving habits in their everyday driving. Promoting more sustainable driving habits is beneficial even before your fleet begins to switch to electric vehicles, so it's a change you can make right now. Driving style, of course, plays a huge role in efficient fuel use. Harsh braking, idling and fast acceleration can all be big on fuel consumption. One of the least sustainable habits for drivers is idling. Just 10 seconds of idling for cars with automatic stop-start systems or three minutes for traditional ignition engines we use more fuel than shutting the engine down and starting it again when moving. GPS and live traffic data can be used to reroute away from slow roads and traffic jams to reduce idling. The good news is that the data you collect through telematics highlights these behaviours, some of which the driver themselves may not be aware of. And this informs the targeted coaching, training and feedback that you need to implement to improve overall fleet efficiency. New electric metrics. For fleet managers and drivers alike, it's about getting familiar with a new set of metrics to measure your operation. Performance, is, performance in an EV is different to miles per gallon. It's all about the energy you expend per mile. You're looking at fuel consumption in watt hours per mile or looking at efficiency through miles per kilowatt hour. In a diesel vehicle, if you've got drivers doing 50 miles per gallon, they're doing pretty well. So by comparison, four miles per kilowatt hour may feel inadequate, but by this new way of measuring, that's a pretty good result in an electric vehicle. It's all about understanding that critical number. Some EVs can give you live feedback as you're driving, so you can see how different behaviours impact energy consumption. 
This feedback can be used to effectively coach drivers into more sustainable driving habits. For example, rewarding anticipation like carefully approaching a roundabout, accelerating gently and regenerative braking. Driving performance will be given a score. Some manufacturers will scale this differently. With some, it's a five star system. Others, it's a score out of 10 or a percentage. As a fleet manager, the types of insights you'd want to draw from data like this would be if people were to drive more sensibly, they'd only need to charge at home or at work rather than using more expensive public charge points. Therefore, an opportunity to save the company money. Diagnostics and maintenance. This is all about keeping your assets operating as efficiently as possible. Telematics devices allow for proactive maintenance, monitoring for engine faults and allowing you to identify potential issues early on. Preventing these issues is going to keep costs under control as it's much more affordable than fixing them. As well as avoiding a breakdown, monitoring faults proactively helps keep a fleet at peak efficiency. When each part is working as it should, you'll get the best fuel economy, translating to a lower demand for energy in the first place. Whether your car is electric or still has an internal combustion engine, reducing fuel consumption through eco-driving and regular maintenance is always a worthwhile step towards sustainability. Telematics can also help fleet managers monitor energy consumption, battery charge, and as with internal combustion engine vehicles, to manage traffic and route planning. Proactive route planning can also help mitigating the much discussed range anxiety that some drivers might anticipate in the early days of your fleet electrification. Using telematics data may very well be second nature to you already, so optimising for your fleet's electric vehicle is the next natural progression. This means managing your charge stations and energy consumption alongside your fleet data, which can add another layer of complexity. The realm of energy management may feel completely new to you, but it's worth getting both types of data to work together, as this can really supercharge your business's sustainability efforts and eliminate the headache of working across multiple data sources. This is something that you can work on together with your energy manager or facilities manager. The type of information you'd be able to see includes the state of charge of a vehicle, where that vehicle is going, how much it's costing, what time of day it's typically charging, where are the charge stations. All of this information can help you plan for efficiencies, like how you can schedule charging your vehicles. You wouldn't want all of your vehicles coming for shift and plugging in at 5 p.m., for example. They'd then all be charged and sit on idle overnight when the energy is usually cheaper. Staggering and scheduling vehicle charging is possible with smart charging. This presents a huge opportunity for cost and carbon savings as the grid is generally less reliant on carbon intensive generation overnight. As I mentioned at the top of the session, the new EV portal that we at Drax have just launched enables vehicles, driver and energy data to be managed, monitored and actioned all in the same platform. Let's take a look at an example. Here we can see the initial dashboard with notifications flagging issues that require attention as soon as you log in. Here's an example of a user looking at their watch list. They can see how many of their vehicles are less than 30% charged. And on the right hand side, the map shows the vehicles moving in real time. This holistic view can make things much more straightforward, not to mention time saving. Here you can also see which drivers require a charge, establish what range they have left. With our EV portal, you can set a radius circle around the vehicle to find the closest available charge stations for them. You can also notify the driver of that. What to include on your daily dashboard? As we've discussed, part of the challenge can be too much data or trying to make decisions based on disparate data from multiple sources. Here's where it can be useful to decide what data is critical to look at every day versus monthly or quarterly. We've also got a handy downloadable measurement framework on our website, and you should have received a link in today's email. For example, here are a few key things you need to check on a daily basis. Fleet vehicles. Are your vehicles working and operating as they should be? What's the mileage of your vehicles? How many have stopped for charging? For how long and at what cost? Charge points. Are there any faults? What is the usage? What is their availability? And has there been any downtime? Energy. Site consumption. Time and cost. Carbon saved. Petrol and diesel vehicle equivalent. A quick glance will tell you if anything requires further attention, and then of course you'd have the ability to drill down into detail should you need to take any action. For example, could you tell why energy consumption is so high with one vehicle or driver and low with another? Are there any vehicles that require immediate charging or do you routine maintenance or safety checks? 
Let's zoom back out now and look at what metrics are valuable in tracking longer term trends and performance. This is the kind of data that can be shared more widely than your own team to share the success of the process of fleet electrification. Reporting and demonstrating progress to the wider business. Internal stakeholders. As with most transformation projects, it's likely that a successful rollout of electrification will require your company's finance, procurement and HR functions to work together with you and your energy, facilities and sustainability colleagues. If they are interested in reports or dashboards specific to their department and your monthly or quarterly reporting is too granular, it may be worth sitting with them to map out what metrics they're interested in. For example, is it more the financial cost benefit analysis they're looking for or the progress towards a carbon zero goal? If your fleet software allows, you could set up custom dashboards for these different views, allowing the data to be populated automatically and give your stakeholders access to the data that way. In the long run, that may be a good time saving exercise for you. The wider business. It's likely that an exciting green initiative such as this will be in the interest of the wider business as well. And there are some top line metrics that are meaningful to help people that aren't close to the project to understand the impact it's having. CO2 emissions saved, cost savings, trees saved, percentage of the fleet electrified, percentage of company target reached. These figures could also be used for media and case studies on your progress. The board. Reporting at a board level has increased significantly in 2021, as fleet operational costs and activities are now part of the board's agenda for many businesses. However, it's likely that these stakeholders won't need anywhere near the level of detail that you're dealing with in your day to day role. Key areas where reporting has increased over the past year include vehicle servicing and maintenance cost, driver behaviour, annual fleet insurance, vehicle incidents and damage repair costs, mileage costs for people using their own car for work journeys, as well as fuel and energy spend for company vehicles. The number of businesses measuring and monitoring driver behaviour to better control operational costs has more than doubled from 18% in 2020 to 41% in 2021. This demonstrates that awareness about the importance of measuring and monitoring business operations has increased over the course of the pandemic. As UK based fleets have embraced and implemented better driver engagement strategies to improve business outcomes in the context of COVID-19. It's likely the board will be really interested in the introduction of electric vehicles. It's a step change from ICE vehicles, it's digital, it requires an energy provision and lots of new ways of working. They'll be interested in the learning curve the business is on, and of course, they'll want to keep an eye on costs. So with this in mind, we can drill down into what data the board is likely to be interested in. Financial, how much does it cost to bring vehicles in in the first place? What are the ongoing costs? How much do they cost to run? And what is the operational saving? Charging. There will likely be an investment in charging infrastructure, so the board will want to know the investment is being paid back through efficiencies and optimisation of vehicle charging. Safety. Vehicle incidents and damage reporting can be useful, especially as electric vehicles are typically more expensive to both buy and insure. Environmental. The board will understandably want to make a lot of noise about the effectiveness of the business's successful green initiatives. Here, it helps to have something to compare it to. For example, this time last year, ICE engines versus EVs versus Target or an industry benchmark. Leveraging data for financial and sustainability goals. CO2 reduction. EVs and plug-in hybrids driven in electric mode produce no harmful exhaust pipe emissions. That means no carbon dioxide, no nitrogen oxide and no tailpipe particulates. With no engine, no transmission and no gearbox, there are far fewer working parts in an EV than an ICE or even hybrid vehicles. With less to maintain, less can go wrong, so lower running costs for your organisation. With the right approach, you can quickly repay your initial investment. EVs are part of your business's sustainability plan. On-site energy generation assets such as solar panel installations can charge your fleet at no additional fuel cost. Additionally, EV batteries provide opportunities for optimising your electricity use. Simple ones include charging at cheaper times of the day, but there's even more potential for savings via demand side response schemes. Three EV organisations build on their sustainability ambitions through fleet electrification. One huge benefit of electrifying your fleet is the transition into energy management. You are suddenly much more in control of your costs. It's like bringing the forecourt to your business. 
you're also more engaged and you can begin to see how else you can make cost savings and generate new revenue streams. Next steps can include smart charging, optimising other assets that require power, like your whole office, vehicle to grid and solar panels. For example, if you have 10 vans on site, that's 10 big batteries just sitting there. So how can you make more of them as an asset when they're not out on the road? Harnessing data can help fleet managers find ways to improve employee contribution and satisfaction. Once your EVs have been running for some time, you'll be able to take your telematics data and turn insight into action. For example, you could train your drivers to save you money. With EV specific telematics data, fleet managers will be able to assess how efficiently their drivers are operating. Even relatively minor tweaks to driving styles could reduce the number of brakes required for vehicle charging and therefore increase operational efficiencies. You can also show them how much money they've saved themselves with improved driving and being proactive about their charging at a cost effective rate. Some EV partners will go the extra step in this stage, taking this insight and using it to run workshops on optimised driving styles. This is one way of introducing optimal driving incentives for those in the driving seat, which turns into operational savings for your business and environmental benefits in the long term. As we've discussed in our very first session, happy drivers are key to any fleet initiative. Creating a positive feedback loop is a brilliant way to make sure everyone is benefiting. And that concludes today's session. We've covered a lot of ground, including how your existing telematics data can not only inform the beginning of your fleet electrification plan, but ongoing optimization. Join us next time for the fourth and final session in our EV Fleet Academy series, My EV Business, Win the Boardroom. We've now covered implementing your electrification strategy from a personnel, infrastructure and data point of view. So the final session is focused on how to reflect all this good work in your communication strategy and increase awareness about the great work you're doing both to the outside world and within your organisation. If you'd like Drax to be your chosen partner to consult on your business's journey, then get in touch with us by following this link. If you have any questions for us on course materials or any burning questions for other fleet operators and energy managers, head on over to the LinkedIn group where the discussion continues. The group will stay open for two weeks after the final session on Friday, and we'll be announcing the winner of our competition to win a £1,200 gift voucher for the Quiet Site, a beautiful award-winning carbon neutral holiday destination in the Lake District. There's still time to join the group and enter, so look out for the details on our website. You'll also be able to re-watch any of these sessions and access the supporting resources using that link too. Thanks very much for listening. See you on the next session.